Uneducated, unfiltered, unhinged. This is the Mangina Dialogues. We at it again with your host, Nick Scopes. And the Gregolicious. You know how we do, cause you know we keeping it gangster and silly. Unplugged like a fool swung titty. About get jitty, cause you know we down to the nitty and the gritty. And we make shit sound so damn pretty. Yeah, cause this unhinged comedy. And right now you're in the mix. So get ready, cause we bout to get it poppin'. We ain't stopping. I'm educated, unfiltered, unhinged. This the Mangina Dialogues. We had it again. Yeah, we had it again. Uneducated, unfiltered, unhinged. Hello and welcome to the Mangina Dialogues. I am your host, Nick Scopes. And I am the Gregalicious. So cute. <laughs> Today... Our guest is the chief of staff at Stand Up New York. John, what's up, my man? What up, guys? Nick, Greg, thanks for having me on, man. Appreciate it. How do you like that for song? Sure, dude. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I did some research on you. Look through your Instagram. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> it looks like you have a pretty awesome job, dude. <laughs> like, super I fucking cool. I used to have cool. a really job. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, now, I, you gotta, I, now you got to make an uh, now you got to make an OnlyFans page. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I'm already on Camsa. Does that count? Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, anything to get some money. Huh? I became a cam boy in the last 24 hours. No. Why not? <laughs> well, you have any dis- <laughs> any discount codes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, use Stand Up NY for uh, 23 tokens. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, you got that? I do. Nick yeah. Rimmer just was. <laughs> He's on it right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm hanging up. <laughs> so what's happening? How, how, are, how are you? How are you keeping yourself busy? Uh, you know, it's it's been tough. I have the luxury that I work for the famous stand up New York in the Upper West Side, but I also live in New Jersey. I live in an area of New Jersey that is pretty much almost Montana. Uh, I'm pretty far out there. Uh, but it's good, you know. Um, it's it's it's. I've been able to kind of get away from it all. Um, but I I I miss it. I miss. I mean, this is so cliche to say, but I miss the hustle and bustle right now. Um, I miss I miss sirens going off. I miss I miss people yelling at each other, cab drivers honking. I miss that. Um, but moreover than that, than I miss that, I I, I miss people in our industry. Um, you know, a lot of I see a lot of clubs saying. I miss the full drinks of trays, uh, full trays of drinks. I miss the, the, the lines out the door. You know what? I don't miss that right now. What I miss is a Monday night show with nine people in the audience that are there to see comedy. That are just like, you know what? Screw it. It's a Monday night. I really like Mark Norman. I really want to see him. And, and you get this experience, that, this, this feeling of nine people being close to one comic. And that's what I miss. That's, that's, that's truly what I miss. Uh, but I've been holding up pretty well. How about you, gentlemen? You know, Doing we're all right, man. You know, yeah, we're we're it's same kind of thing. We live out in you know about an hour outside the city. Uh, Nick's a little further out, and it's weird. You know, it's it's just odd <laughs> that you want to go. You, everyone thinks like, oh, I got nothing to do. That's great. And then when you have nothing to do, you're like, I can't believe I have nothing to do. What the hell am I going to do? No, absolutely. You know, so uh, that's why. That's why specials like Tiger King are doing so well right now. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad I stumbled upon those memes on the Internet and then spent eight hours watching that shit show. Oh, God, what a de- disaster that but was. You know what's funny? Like, people look at that who, I guess, who, now granted, the Tiger guy isn't from Florida, but people see that and they're like, this is weird. And I'm like, not if you've ever been to Tampa or like anywhere yeah. in Florida, it's not weird. Like that is sure. what it is, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, it was the best though. Like the whole, it's just the whole thing where it's like part comedy because it's, can, you can't believe this guy exists and they're that wrapped yeah, up yeah. into this cat shit. And then it's, <laughs> it's like this dr- like police drama. Like, did he do it? Did he not do it? It like, uh-huh. it hit all bases. It is. It's crazy. Uh, we can all agree that Errol definitely killed her husband. Spoiler. Sorry, spoiler alert for all of your listeners that really don't, that haven't watched it yet. But I will truly say that meth is a hell of a drug. Oh, my God. 
Dude, <laughs> apparently it turns you gay. So I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the two times I did mess. You know, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> you got rid of your that, cats. That was probably that was the thing that blew my mind the most. Is like, you're if you're clearly a straight man, you're like, yeah, I'll just you know marry this guy and we'll have sex for like nine years and then like I'll just go on with my life. Like, what do you mean? How do, how do you get there? Like, I don't understand. I mean, I just love the look of that guy's teeth, the three teeth. He was banging the front desk girl, apparently, knocked her up. And then, I mean, I'm giving spoilers to all your listeners right now. If you haven't watched it, I'm pretty sure everyone's watched it. I'm hoping. I'm hoping to Jesus that people have been watching that more over than press conferences right now. But, yeah, just unbelievable, the the, the look of this guy. And the Travis kid who blew his fucking brains out all over the place. (laughs) That kid, yeah. That was the biggest, like, dude, what are you doing? Like, You're like this tall, handsome kid from California with a family. Go home. I know. Go what home. What the hell are you doing? Or do gay porn. You know what I mean? <laughs> he liked yeah, big he cats. He lives in California. He's right there. Do you find yeah, it ironic was- at all that, that these are a bunch of gay dudes that um, are raising big cats? Like, I don't know. Like, there's got to be a ton of pussy jokes there. I mean, there is. I mean, but the ultimate thing is that gay guys move on and, you know, that is our version of the cat lady, I guess. It's it, it, it just, I don't know. I'm, in, I'm obsessed with that show. Like everything about it. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> you watched it. You're writing I, fan fiction I'm, like, now. <laughs> I'm waiting for season two. There's got to be a follow up. Like, you know what I want to know? The dude that was the producer that lost all his shit in the fire. Like, yeah, wh- the hard copy guy. Right. Yeah, the yeah, hard yeah. Copy. Like, where, first of all, where did this other version of all of this shit come from? And then um, what's that guy doing? With this, he's got to have something. See, I, apparently everything was lost in the fire, but I mean, I could only imagine what that looked like. That would be a gold mine for any, 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 any reality based television at this point. I mean, shit. I mean, everybody asks, you know, we, we, we have a, we have a long lineage of, 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 of allowing, you know, people that have been uh, in the bad public eye on our stage. Like we had Roseanne Barr, uh, you know, we've had people like Milo Yiannopoulos, um, you know, we've invited Louis C.K. I want the fucking Tiger King at this point. <laughs> <laughs> have, his get, his, have his get out of jail party at Stand Up New York. Oh, my God. I would love that. I would love that. I would lose money on that just to see what happened. Well, have you seen oh David Spade? He's had all of the guys, every one of them, on his, uh, like, internet thing that he's doing, either on oh IGTV. Or, but go to his Instagram. They're all there. And then Jeff Ross had someone on yesterday. He had J- Joe yeah, Ross had yeah. the Tiger guy called in from jail. Yeah, Joe Exotic called in yeah. from jail. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, so good. So good. You I sh- cannot wait. I am, I'm kind of happy that we won't hear as many jokes in the next 30 days about Tiger King. <laughs> I know. They're coming, though. <laughs> no, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. They're it's coming. fucking light when I see it. <laughs> All right, so enough about Tiger King. Uh, we could, I could do this for weeks. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the club. Like, what's what? What do you think? Like, where do where do you see the next two months? Like, what where do you when do you think we're going to get back to live comedy? Like, what do you? How do you think people are going about it now? We're doing their IGTV stuff and the YouTube things. Like, do you think that that's a good <laughs> fill? Like, you know, for the time being, like, just what are your thoughts? on the whole situation and getting back to normal. I've had the conversation several times. Um, this is not going to be a Thanos snap and everything is going to go back to normal. Um, what we'll find out after quarantine has been lifted, after safe distances have been lifted, uh, we will see in our industry a drop off, a dramatic drop off. Yeah, we're not going to have packed rooms. People are still going to be scared of it. Um, people were scared of eating in Chinese food restaurants after the MSG scandal. Uh, people are not going to want to be in tight quarters. Uh, that is one of our luxuries and one of our downfalls of our club is that we hold 130. So if you're at 130, you're on on, on top of each other over there. Right. I see ourselves in the next two months slowly but surely gaining back an audience. I will say that the streaming uh, fascination is going to be something that is here to stay. Um, I see us kind of utilizing streaming um, on a closed circuit television so people that necessarily can't get out, uh, you know, those that are elderly, those that are, 
you know, more prone or susceptible to uh, this virus or any other uh, uh, sickness, that they'll stay home, but we want to make sure that they have offerings as well. And one of these offerings will probably be this live stream. I have a, I'm, I'm going to probably say that I'm almost certain that every single comedy club will follow suit and do a live show and a streaming show version. Um, it, it's just, it, it's the way of the future. I mean, let's be honest. How many people, uh, did we lose, uh, in the last six to nine months after the boom of stand up comedy on Netflix? When they ordered a uh, hundred new specials, I mean, it, 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 we need we need to keep up. Um, I don't think that comedy clubs nor performance art will close their doors automatically. We had the same situation happen with with the inception of the television. People thought that theater was going to die, um, but there's nothing like that live experience. Um, you know, I, I, we say New Yorkers are strong. New Yorkers are great, but um, you know, 50% of my of my traffic comes from Bridge and Tunnel. And they come from the Midwest and they come from tourists. And that's what needs to happen first. Um, there needs to be, we need to have some boom in tourism in New York City. Because let's be honest, it's not really New Yorkers that go to comedy clubs anymore. It's mostly tourists. Yeah, no, I, that's totally true. Like, So what do you think about the, the comics, you know, wanting their stuff in real time out there? Because I know that. You know, as we talk to guys, you know, because we we book a, a small room out here in Connecticut, that sure. you know they always are like conscious of like you know because we'll have a, a you know a camera guy in that's shooting whether it's video or audio for our purposes, and so many are like you're not going to put that out. This isn't streaming anywhere. You know that it always comes up. So you know I think there that might been. that might be with newer comedians, but still you mm -hmm. know guys that are working on routines like a Mark Norman comes in, he's going to do half an hour or even an hour, you know, he's, I'm sure he's trying to work out some new stuff for when he goes in Cincinnati. You're right. So we did a streaming uh, mindset. Uh, we've been doing it for a lot of, for about two weeks now where we're inviting comments to go do, uh, do stuff. It's only been streaming. There's no ability to kind of pick it up offline. I mean, if you really wanted it, you could, you could record it, but the average person, and, and this is no offense to Mark Norman, the average person isn't going to, try and tape Mark Norman's set. Right. Um, I mean, we have the traditional drop in of a Gaffigan, a Seinfeld, you know, a Chris Rock and Amy Schumer here and there, but those aren't even listed, obviously. Yeah. So I think, I, I, I am pretty sure, you know, you take somebody like, let's say a Matthew Broussard. Matthew Broussard is one of my favorite comics currently right now in New York City. Um, but he has told me, and I've seen this in his sets, what he'll do is he'll, he'll, He'll start off with a really good bit that probably saw maybe on Fallon, on his last album, or on a Comedy Central, and then he'll try something in the middle that he, he's working on, and the ending will be something that he that, that he did on Conan or something like that. So that stuff's already out there. So I don't think people like that will be too nervous about it. But also, it's, it's about adapting. You know, um, yeah. it's not about the strongest surviving. It's who's able to adapt the quickest. Right. Yeah, and you know, I think in in some respects, it probably or I'm sure definitely does open up these guys or anyone to a much wider audience through streaming, you know, through a club on the internet, you know, you can now go see, you know, stand up New York. If you're in Wisconsin, you know, sure. see what's going on there. If you're a comedy fan or, you know, whatever. So it does give an opportunity to build an audience through, you know, a club setting much faster and wider than having to actually go to Wisconsin and Detroit and Phoenix. Absolutely. I mean, we got it. We got, we have to look in the perspective of what other nights of the week are. So on a Monday through Thursday, you're working out your stuff. Fridays and Saturdays. And I'm going to take this term from Mike Cannon. Mike Cannon said this um, on my own podcast when he got past the cellar, he got the opportunity to play in front of a packed room. And even as a, uh, as a, as a, uh, you know, as a senior comic, as Mike Cannon, he just always would throw fastballs if he has a big room. He won't try anything new because he wants to see that uh, that that audience go home happy. So what will happen is that when your streaming services are higher, let's say on the weekend, most of them are probably going to want to fire only fastballs. And a lot of these jokes that they're going to be throwing out there, there's stuff that already are on albums and they've already been on late night and things of that nature. Right. Um, and let's be honest, um, no offense to Mike Cannon, but there are, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not packing rooms on a Saturday night because they want to see Mike Cannon do 15 minutes. But yes, it'll expose them to brand new other people um, in, uh, that, that they may have not heard of before. So I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm roaring to go. I'm ready. I'm ready to pour some drinks, but I'm also ready to sit back on a Monday and 
watch Monday Night Raw from the bar and see nine people in the showroom laughing hysterically over a new bit that, you know, Jill Kimmel put together. Do you right. know what I mean? Yeah, that's, no, totally. That's and how's the staff that sounds doing? sounds so cool, man. I mean, it is cool. I mean, it could be very stressful, but that's what Coke is for, right? Um, (laughs) (laughs) Or meth, whatever your drug is. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's cool. It it is. It is. um, You know, I was was thinking back, and I I was talking to a few of my staff members uh, this week, and I was asking them, they're like, what do you miss? And uh, they just miss being together. Um, But... I was like, that's cute and everything, but the one thing that they do miss is they miss the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <miss> the money. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ, you need like nine phones to try and get through, you know, uh, New York City's unemployment line or New York State's unemployment line. So my my people are uh, they're 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 okay, but they they could use some help. And you know, um, uh, we've put together a GoFundMe page uh, for my staff. Uh, I'm about nine to ten employees right now, and you know, it sucks because this is their major source of income. Right. And uh, so, yeah, uh, nice enough that, uh, Greg, you, you guys uh, over at the Medjana, you guys donated. So thank you so much for that. Um, I want to thank uh, our friends over at uh, uh, Chris Gethard and Mike Berbiglia uh, shouting us out and doing some stuff for that. Ronnie Cheng's put it out. So many people across the country and across the world have donated, and that's been awesome. And it really, it, it, it's good because um, uh, this is, this is just a holding spot. This is a holding chip for my staff until uh, until whatever happens, and they're all able to you know make money. And I guarantee you, you're good for at least one handshake or a hug from my staff. If you tipped more and gave more, I probably will do other stuff as long as I have a bag of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Nick, I, you hear I, that? I, I, Nick, roll in the truck. <laughs> Yeah, for real. Man. John's making promises. Going, bro. I got a yeah. brand new, brand new green room downstairs. Uh, I have, I have knee pads. Uh, I will thank you if you make sure that my staff does not suffer. Does it have a lock on the door? Does it have a lock huh? on that green room door? No, I want people to see. <laughs> oh, okay. Did you not hear we're live streaming? Nick, we're live streaming. Exhibitionist. Yeah, we can live stream that. What do you? Yeah, think? for can soda fans. Yeah. <laughs> so, John, what do you think is going to happen with all the clubs in the city? Do you think that all of them survive? Do you think, unfortunately, some won't be able to stick it out? Like, what what's the what's the feeling around the community? When I started, um, and I'm sorry for such a politician answer, but uh, when I started in comedy, um, I I started off as a fan. Um, I came into here, and I honestly looked at comedy clubs as a line of revenue. Um, I famously say on a lot of interviews that stand up New York takes up 90% of my time, but only 30% of my 1099 a year, uh, which completely sucks. <laughs> um, but I will say this is that if you asked me three years ago, would I, uh, what do you, what do I think? I would probably, I would hope that everybody closed down, <laughs> but three years into it now, I hope everybody stays strong. I hope, there are some new clubs out there. There's Old Man Hustle that opened up in Brooklyn, which is a fantastic spot. There's places like Creek in the Cave that, uh, you know, which has two floors that relies on, 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 on comics and, you know, the local audience. Um, I hope they flourish and they make it through uh, and make it through the other side. There are people like New York Comedy Club that opened up two rooms, now one on 4th Street. And I hope that 4th uh, Street, you know, is able to pull through. You have a place like The Stand who opened up over 20,000 square feet of, of space, including kitchens, pizza oven, two different showrooms. Jesus Christ, I hope they survive. Yeah. I really, yeah. It, it, it's not good for our industry if, if, if they go down. Um, I will tell you this, uh, you know, I am, I'm, pull, I'm pulling for everybody to make it out on the other side, to the other side. Um, the truth of the matter is, is that there are going to be one or two that won't make it to the other side, which is going to be completely sad. Um, but, the best thing that I can do is, you know, when this all opens back up, go to the places that you can and, you know, support live and local shows. If you can't come to New York City, make sure that you're going to shows in your area. If you're from Connecticut, going to those great theaters uh, and bars over there where there's live comedy and not only live comedy. I'm saying, I can't believe I'm saying this. Support improv. Um, <laughs> support, uh, 
support acoustic shows, support folk music, you know. This is um, that uh, arts and science, arts, arts, arts and music have been cut from a lot of public schools. And, you know, you don't really appreciate it till you kind of go out there in the, in the regular world. And, you know, we, we need these kind of uh, these forums. And um, my hope is that we all get the other side. But as a business guy, I know that one or two won't make it. Um, I know that I would probably say that uh, also 10% of uh, up and coming comics, uh, it's dead in the water for them. Um, I would say that with this hurt, you probably you probably see a good a good amount of comics leave New York City because they just can't afford it anymore because they've been stuck and maybe they'll move back uh, to you know their parents' place or they move somewhere you know that's more economical for them. Um, this is gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt on a lot of fronts. But the best thing we can do is just to kind of keep on keep on. I know that sounds so political, but yeah, we just gotta keep. <laughs> Keep on fucking drucking. <laughs> yeah. No, it's- you have my vote, dude. You have my vote for all <laughs> Even with all the stuff that you'll see on Cam Soda? <laughs> Keep it coming. Yeah. How do you think you're going to get my vote? Especially because of that. <laughs> no, it's true. You know, it's, dude, I gotta- it, it, it is kind of like, you know, obviously your, your career, you know, been in this. Ours is just sort of beginning, really. It, but it is kind of scary to see what's happening and how that affects you know, everything, because, you know, the bottom line is you got to do business to stay in business unless sure. you have the benefit of a very wealthy benefactor that's going to keep the stand in business or whoever it might be. Um, and, yeah. or, or, you know, if you're an aspiring comedian and you, and your parents are helping you out, then that's obviously great too. But I, sure. I agree with you. I think that there's going to be a lot of weeding out wherever it might be just from people that cannot afford to live in New York city. Like if you want to be a okay. comedian, you know, and you're trying it out, then maybe you might have to move to Detroit to hone your craft because it's way cheaper to live in Detroit and there may not be as many clubs, but they're still comedy. Yeah. Yeah. And you can still hone your craft there. I mean, we're finding, uh, I mean, listen, this is going to be, unfortunately, there's a lot of flashes in the hands uh, in New York City. Um, Ultimately, you need to be from New York or LA to kind of make it. Um, But, there's other options. Um, you know, I encourage comics and, you know, Michael Costa, you know, who's on the daily show. He, uh, he had this great tweet and I've talked to him a couple of times. He said, he said to me, you know, John, a lot of people move to the, you know, the, uh, to New York city, to start comedy. Don't do it yet. You know, you're never ready. What you need to do is make sure that you have something nine to five and you have a basis that you're making money. And you know what, maybe if you, if you make it through this alive, and you've been hurting, maybe you got to do that. Maybe you got to take that job, you know, and, you know, doing DoorDash for a little bit. Maybe you're driving an Uber for a little bit. Maybe you're going and you're becoming a PA or, or, or at CBS or NBC. Um, you got to do that kind of stuff to kind of make a little bit of money. Um, and then you can get your career back on track. Um, this is going to set back a lot of people. $1,200 is a drop in the bucket for somebody that lives in Manhattan. Let's, well, we can all agree on that. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. But, you need to you need to kind of uh, push through and you need to kind of do what you need to do. Uh, like I said, it's not about the fittest being surviving; it's those that are able to adapt. It's true, man. It's true. It's uh, this is an interesting time, especially as someone that just started comedy like two years ago. So this is uh, <laughs> it's a great time I got in. But anyway, um, <laughs> I want to ask you. <laughs> it's good timing, it's like the stock market right before it crashed. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, right before oh eight. So I wanted to talk about how you got into this world, man. Because like I said, you know, once you're Instagram, your job looks awesome. Like, how did you find yourself in this position? Um, so a little bit about me. I started my career out um, many, many, many a, a eons ago in hospitality. <clears throat> I worked in uh, food and beverage for a long time with restaurants and bars uh, and hotels. Um, I had the opportunity to move down to uh, Houston, Texas, and I took it where I worked um with uh, some small campaigns for the RNC. I also worked for some oil and gas companies. And um, I, uh, we created a company down there for oil and gas, specifically events. Um, I know this sounds really weird. Sounds like not many of your other uh, people that are probably on your show, but um, I built the company over there uh, with a couple other people with, uh, uh, under oil and gas. Uh, two years later, I got the opportunity to move back to New York City uh, to work for a PR firm. And uh, I took it. I was doing events for them, but I was working in apparel. And um, 
I was working for brands like William Rass, which is Justin Timberlake's line. I was working for uh, Puff Daddy with uh, his line, Sean John, but I hated it. Um, uh, one of our clients happened to, uh, I was talking to him uh, at, the, at some bar, and he's like, you're funny. He's like, you would, uh, you would do really well talking to my brother. And I was like, all right, I'll talk to your brother. The, his brother happened to be Donnie Zolden from Stand Up New York. Um, I came on to Stand Up New York just as an event um, uh, consultant. I brought in some, uh, you know, some, some larger scale events. I would sell them out on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, and uh, I really kind of pivoted because I, I think that, you know, comedy gets was so niche at the time that comedy is something that people wouldn't expect to, let's say, do, you know, um, a party at uh, or a meeting at. So I kind of opened the map to that. Uh, at the same time, we were working with a uh, with a name by the name of James Altucher, uh, who was big in the uh, self-help as well as entrepreneur field. So we opened up a little bit more. Through this time period, because of my background in food and beverage and hospitality, I was seeing a lot of cracks in his system. Um, and it was no fault of Donnie's uh, or ownership, but I showed them how to fix it. Um, within a year there, um, I was elevated to chief of staff for the club, uh, where I oversee the booking department, uh, well, the production of, uh, of shows, all booking. Um, we also have a small podcast network as well which uh, includes Race Wars with uh, Sherrod Small. Uh, we also do uh, What a Time to Be Alive, and we also do Yamaniko Ranting and Raving. So um, I just kind of got set into it. I will tell you, it's it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It looks, looks like a lot of glam, but it's a lot of fucking work, guys. <laughs> I'm sure, man. I, I, can't, I can't even imagine, but it does look like fun. It does. Now, have you, have you done stand-up at all? Um, I have done it twice. Uh, okay. The first time I did it, I was asked to go down to Houston, Texas with um, James Altucher, who I just alluded to. Um, he became an owner of the club as well. Uh, we flew down to Houston, Texas, my old stomping grounds, and uh, he asked me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of, uh, I'm gonna uh, do a humble brag here. We were flying private uh, from Teterboro, and uh, he looked over to me and goes. I'd like you to uh, to open the show. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, I'd like you to do stand-up. And obviously that's my boss. And I was like, sure, I can do stand-up. So I did stand-up for six minutes and introduced him uh, at in Houston, Texas to 125 of his closest friends uh, at, a, at a venue called Joke Joint. <laughs> um, and then um, actually, I take that back. I've done stand-up three times. The second time I did stand-up was Christmas of 2019. We had no hosts. So I had to host the show. And um, I can honestly say the last stand-up show at Stand Up New York before we shut down before the, um, uh, the, the, the virus situation, I hosted a Saturday night show there. And uh, yeah, those are the three times I did stand-up. <laughs> and how'd it go? <laughs> uh, no offense uh, to you who's been in two years, but I fucking crushed, baby. <laughs> I'm not offended. <laughs> So when's the fourth <laughs> happening? When when is number four? Uh, the fourth is not happening. I I am a I'm I am a I'm 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 far deep on the bench. Um, <laughs> You're going you out on top. You, yeah, you need to you need to really be in a bind before you call me in. Um, it's it's going to be a while for that. Um, but hosting is something that is kind of easy. It's a lot of crowd work. Um, I, I've been working in hospitality for a while, so. It's, and, you know, obviously you ball bust with your friends. And um, it, it, it's an easier art form than being up there and doing five, ten minutes of straight stand-up of, you know, why your penis looks weird. You know what I mean? <laughs> or girlfriends are weird. <laughs> uh, relationships are weird. No offense. That's not how all you guys sound, but sometimes it blends in all the time. <laughs> no, I know, what you're, I know what you're talking about. I'm not really one of those, but I, I get it. <laughs> I've heard it. Although, I get it. You have a dick. Cool. I, all right. I swear to God, I would kill to watch an open mic right now. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you should host one on the, uh, on, the, on the network. What no, was that guy? I'm sorry. Do you guys have open mics there at all? We do. We do open mics uh, traditionally Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. Pay five bucks. You have five minutes of stage time. 
And if you're lucky and I had a couple of drinks at 4.30, I walk in the room and I make fun of you. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I'm very supportive. We are one of the more, uh, we are one of the clubs that we, we pride ourselves on, um, on the new class. Um, you know, <clears throat> Everybody claims that they have, you know, the best comics, but where did the best comics start? One of my favorite pictures of all time that just eludes of what 2019, 2018, 2020, 2021 is going to be. There's a great picture of Pete Davidson and uh, Nikki Glazer sitting on our bench right in front of the club. And it is this look, and this is like a late night at 11 o'clock at night after the 1030 show had just started. And that's like this, and that was the, that was a starting place for them. You know what I mean? Dan Soder goes back, and any time that he does any, um, you know, uh, when he speaks about being uh, on stage, he says that he cut his teeth doing check spots at Stand Up New York. Uh, somebody like Amy Schumer used to do our open mic at five o'clock and would sit uh, at the bar with Greg, and she'd be furiously writing next to you know uh, Anthony Jeselnik. Um, it, it's crazy the amount of people that got their start there. And our hope is that we understand that we're not the seller. We're not the stand. But if we could find the next person to kind of be like, yeah, that's our guy. Uh, people like Jay Jordan right now. That's our, you know, I can, I can claim that's our guy over there. Jeff R. Curry, that's our guy. John Marco Cerezi, that's our guy. You know, Jocelyn Chia, that's our girl. Um, that's what we want to be. We want to be that stepping stone. And you know what? Some, and most of the times they come back and they pay it forward. Uh, yeah. People like um, Jack Whitehall uh, will come in and he'll be like, John, can I do a spot? Jerry Seinfeld will call me from an undisclosed number and be like, hey, I'm coming in tonight. And it's just like, yeah, no problem. Whatever, else, whatever the fuck you want to do. You know what I mean? And that's how we get paid back. Um, so, yeah, we, 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 really, we really enjoy, uh, you know, those that are starting off their career and we know it's going to be tough when you get out of this. So um, we're probably going to start doing open mics a little bit longer and starting a little bit earlier. So people can kind of get their time in. Right. That's cool. So do you, have you, um, do you guys watch the, not you in particular, maybe you do, but is someone watching the open mic in case there is someone there that you say, Holy shit, like we should probably get that person in one of our showcases. Not obviously not a, not a spot like on a big show, but like, do you scout those open mics or is that just purely for guys to come in, do five, get the hell out and just work on shit? Um, a lot of them will use it as doing five and get the hell out. So they're kind of prepping themselves and right. warming up for their next spot. I will sit in there. I, I joke that, I mean, people know when I, when, when the door swings open, they see me and I, I'm not there to kind of make anybody nervous, but there's been several times that I've been like, that's really good. One of the one people in particular, I could tell you right now, that kind of surprised me. You never know who's going to show up at the open mic. Uh, Grant Cotter from the West Coast. He's a very popular comic out there. Did Oddball. Did the Warped Tour Festival. Um, plays in public a bunch. He did the open mic. I was like, this guy's fucking awesome. Through him, I was able to kind of get contacts with so many other people. Uh, Grant Cotter, uh, a West Coast uh, boy, um, also got me hooked up with people like Connor McSpadden and Keith Carey from the Mean Boys podcast, who now write for David Spade. So it's, it's amazing who you can find at these open mics. Um, the other person I would say is Aton Levine. Aton Levine is uh, one of our contractors at Stand Up New York and Skittish Media, which is another arm of us. He is a brilliant mind. He just put out a new uh, video about uh, Stater uh, over Zoom, and it's fantastic. It's got people like Matthew Broussard on it, uh, Amy Veltman's on it. Really good stuff, but I saw him at an open mic, and I was like, that's a really good premise. I pushed him up the food chain, and now he's one of our producers for Skittish uh, on a contract basis. Um, I personally go out, and I love seeing new talent. I will go to, I'll go to the, the Grizzly Pair on a late night, check it out. I will go to um, Westside Comedy Club and uh, see some good shows over there. One of my favorites is going to um, uh, the... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, name, uh, Comic Strip on Tuesdays and watching new talent over there. Comedy Mob is my new talent development. They run a show over at um, uh, V-Spot, which is uh, on St. Mark's every Thursday, and they run my uh, Bring It show, and they pretty much find the best talent from their open mic and give them the opportunity to do stand-up on a Saturday 6 p.m. show. That's so cool. yeah, I love new talent, man. I will. I. I. You never know who's gonna be watching. Um. It. 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 You never know. It could be me. Uh. And I don't mean shit, but it could be Jessica Pilot 
from Stephen Colbert, who is notorious for walking into open mics, not in New York City, but like in random towns like Denver and like Detroit and just like watching comics. It's, it's like he booked for late night and he's at an open mic. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, we've had some of those people you mentioned on at our at our club in uh, or booked. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen now in um, Connecticut. We had, um, oh my God, I forgot his name. We just had him on the podcast, Nick. Who, who was We it? had Jocelyn on. No, not Jocelyn. Jocelyn. Yeah, on the was... podcast. The, he was in Hustlers. Oh my God. I'm... Oh, John Marco. Oh, John, yeah, Marco. John Marco. Jesus, I'm losing my mind. This virus is getting the best oh, of me. Sorry, Craig's old. <laughs> yeah, so we 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 he he did a show for us and out here it was I mean he crushed it was amazing and then Eton we actually have scheduled for May I'm sure it's, I mean I, hopefully we can go through with it but I doubt it it's probably gonna have to get oh, scheduled. Eton is eton has got this bit about uh, about lawyers and the jingo Selena and Barnes it's it's so good and I watched that develop at my 5 p.m. open mic and I oh. say my. But it was the open mic at 5 p.m. at Stanford New York. And, I mean, it's just it's, it's great. Um, we love we, we love new talent. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, it's really great that you you guys are so vested in developing it out. And, you know, obviously the whole bringer thing is, you know, people look at it one way or the other way. But, you know, it is it is what it is. And it's, you know, certain, you know, for some guys, it's something you have to look up to do and then work out getting advanced from there. But it's just part of the game. I mean, any comic will tell you that if you have a pro comic on the same stage as you, you try harder. Yeah. You try a lot harder because you don't want to. Here's the thing is like when you're like most bringer shows that I see, you're doing three pros and like five bringers. That's traditionally a five, five bringer comic. The problem, the, the great thing about our bringer show is that you don't want to be the lull in the show. You know what I mean? So you're firing. And I'm going to use this word phrase again. You're just firing fastballs all fastball and that's what you want to do and you know uh, if you're not challenged you get complacent and there's nothing worse than a 20 person you know bringer show where you have to watch three hours of comedy and at the you know at midpoint you're just fucking hostages at that point and you just don't even care <laughs> you, you should Dude, make, you so, should make t-shirts so up that just say hostage <laughs> and keep them out at the end of every <laughs> I'm going to do that, sit outside a, the club. Yeah, anybody that goes back to the hour and a half mark is just like, hey, hot to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> for real. I'm going to start doing that when we get back into the comedy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can um, take that joke. <laughs> yeah, right. Perfect. Perfect. I don't know. I want you to save it for your fourth time. To explain. Ah, there it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Well, listen, we're coming to the end here, but I want to know if there's anything else you want to plug. Anything yeah. Going on? We're doing some cool things. First of all, I want to thank you guys. You guys have been awesome. Uh, we can't wait to kind of do some business with you guys in the next couple of months and do a live show from Stand Up New York. We'd love to do something. Uh, and yeah. I know that we're kind of planning on doing something. We're not going to kind of release anything, but you guys are great. Thank you so much for your support to uh, my staff over at Stand Up New York. Uh, guys, if you have a chance, go to uh, 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 our Instagram, Stand Up NY, uh, our Twitter, Stand Up NY. Um, go to all forms of media, social media, and you can find the GoFundMe. Whatever you can give, if you can't give, if you can't, even if you can't give any money, if you can share it with your friends, um, you know, my staff. I ask, the, I ask the world of my staff, and they never ask for anything. And I was sitting down about a week ago, actually Sunday. I was like, fuck. I should do something, and um, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a very, I'm not a rich man myself, so uh, I'm, I'm asking for the support because uh, they, they, they really are the backbone. They're the reason that you're having a good time uh, at these comedy clubs. It's, it's, it's 95% our comics, but it's also 5% of my staff. So uh, please give, follow us on all forms of social media, and guys, remember back if you guys want to reference this podcast and you heard it here, admission at the club on me. On me, baby. You just tell me John B sent you from the Mangina. And, uh, yeah, we'll give you free admission to the club. That's really awesome, John. Really appreciate it. Obviously, anything we can do to... You're a nice dude, bro. You are a nice man. To keep... I am, but I still get a two-drink minimum on all those suckers. (laughs) (laughs) Free is relative. (laughs) Guys, thank you again so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, John. We'll talk to you soon, buddy. Thanks, man.